In this video, we're going to talk about the role of calcium in plant culture. Calcium is considered to be what we call a secondary macronutrient, meaning it's not required in the same levels as nitrogen and potassium, but it's still very important for plant production. Calcium deficiency typically will, will show up on the new leaves of the plant. So for instance, in this geranium, you'll see it on the new bands. What happens is as the leaf develops, it tends to, to stop developing properly and it forms brown spots and distortion of the leaf growth. We will also see that in fruits and vegetables where the fruit will not develop properly. Uh, common calcium deficiency is what we call blossom end rot in tomatoes where the fruit looks good on top, but on the bottom it has a brown spot on it. Typically the causes of calcium deficiency, besides the fact there may be lack of it in your fertilizer uh, program, uh, one big factor is anything that dis disrupts the water flow through the plant. So for instance, the plant requires the water to bring the calcium up into its new growth. So anything that reduces the evaporation or the movement of water out through the plant will cause a deficiency. So as an example, if your humidity in your greenhouse is high, or for instance, maybe conditions are very cold, that will inhibit the uptake of water, which inhibits the uptake of calcium. Even if the calcium levels are normal in the growing media, it can actually induce a deficiency. Another possibility is competition. So as an example, magnesium can be in direct competition with calcium. If there's high levels of magnesium, the plant can't take up the calcium as efficiently, so that could also induce a calcium deficiency. A lot of people think that calcium is tied in with pH. Now it is true that pH does influence its availability to some degree, but because of the amounts that are put on, pH is really not a factor when it comes to a deficiency symptom. Normal rates of calcium that should be found either in your fertilizer solution or in your growing meter, actually both, should be a minimum of 40 parts per million. Uh, some crops, such as perhaps poinsettias and geraniums, prefer 80 parts per million. Even some crops can tolerate much higher levels than that. Calcium toxicity is a rather unusual symptom to find. It, it's rather rare, but if you do see high levels of calcium, typically what will happen is instead of causing the toxicity, it'll actually interfere with the uptake of other elements. So as an example, high levels of calcium will interfere with the uptake of magnesium and potassium and indirectly cause their deficiency symptoms to appear. If you do see a lot of calcium in your system, you might want to check your fertilizer application rate, but specifically look at your water. Some water sources could have calcium levels as high as two, 300 parts per million, which is very unusual, but I have seen it. In that particular case, you may want to consider looking at other water sources or looking at your fertilizer application rates. So where can you find sources of calcium? Well, there's certainly a lot of good fertilizers out there. For instance, a 13213, 15515, 17517, which we call CalMag fertilizers. They provide both calcium and magnesium, but generally not a, a large amount of calcium. So they're good if you need a little bit. If you need a lot, uh, for instance, there's a product out there, 15015, which provides a significant amount of calcium, which you can rotate into your program. Other sources, again, your water typically will provide those. So if you're using reverse osmosis, or if you're using pond water, or other types of purified precipitation, runoff type waters, they're typically low in, in calcium, so you might have to look at using those as supplements. Other areas where you can supplement would be uh, incorporation of gypsum into the growing media. Gypsum will give you maybe one to two month uh, supply of calcium. And other areas where you can look at, maybe if you're going the organic route, some bone meal products, other products like that. But keep in mind, those products take a long time to break down. So again, your goal is to try to bring in 40 parts per million calcium in your water source, fertilizer source, with every watering, and that should avoid calcium deficiency symptoms. Thank you. For more information, visit our website, follow us on social media.